very much. Thank you very much, Ben. And thank you everyone for, for being here and for this space. I think this is actually how peace building looks like, creating a space where peace actors can start a dialogue and try to reimagine how conflict prevention should be. And even though right now my slides are from, from a university, from the academia, I would like to talk more as a practitioner. I've been working as a, as a, in peace building and conflict mediation for more than 10 years. And, um, and even more, as, as Ms. Bonnie mentioned before, I would like to uh, talk as a human being that is actually very passionate about this, this topic. I have dedicated my, my whole life, uh, both professionally and personally, to this field. And maybe it's also because of my personal history. Those of you who know a little bit about the, the history of Guatemala, I grew up during the war there. And even um, the post-conflict period, uh, that it was even more violent than the war. And, and it's a reflection that all, um, Bernardo mentioned yesterday, that the concept of post-conflict might not be accurate. Actually, most of the time, we are using the concept post-agreement, which is not the same as post-conflict, because having an agreement not necessarily means that there is peace, uh, especially when the root causes of the conflict haven't been addressed. Um, so today I would like, like to share with you some, some reflections that have come to my mind uh, during these years as a, as a practitioner. And I think uh, this, this, this scenario, this platform, uh, helped me to put them uh, together and, and I would like to share it with you and discuss it. And um, one of the limitations of, of what I am going to present with you is that they are based on my experience. It's, 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 it's just my perspective. It's, it's, it's a product of, of what I have lived. But it's also something powerful. It's not something that I have read in books. It's something that I have seen, that I have put in practice. And some of them are filters that I have in the field of conflict mediation and, and, and peace building. And we can also learn from, from, from these kind of experiences. So um, the main reflections that I would like to share with you are about our perceptions of conflict. Thank you. Um, about how we address conflict uh, resolution or, or peace building, certain paradox that we can find in the field and the timing of doing peace building. Um, thank you, Ben. So starting about how we perceive uh, conflict. I think that that's the very starting point, and that is why I call this, this session for me as reflections, because for me, reflection is always the starting point. How we perceive reality affects how we understand, how we do conflict analysis, as, as it was mentioned before, and according to our conflict analysis, then our actions will be reflected. So the starting point is always how we perceive reality, and us peace actors are the main ones who have to embody certain ideas on how to understand what is going on around us, especially about conflict. Because conflict is not something that we should avoid. Conflict is life. <laughs> conflict is part of every interaction that we have. Even in, in peace building agencies, there is always tension among individuals and among different organizations. You, you that work with many different organizations of, or, that are in the field of peace building, there will always be tension and it's not a bad thing. Tension, it's something that can help us to create change. But the problem is that we can, when we cannot handle this tension, it can lead to violence. And this is unfortunately what is happening in many parts of the world. That is why we think that conflict is something negative, but it is not. Conflict can be also an opportunity for improvement. Uh, it can be an, an, a, a space for innovation and space for dialogue. It can be a window to a different way of, 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 of living. And it can also lead to peace. And, and that is uh, something um, uh, positive that we can see from, from this approach, that the same scenarios where we are seeing violence all around the world are also scenarios where we can potentially build peace. The same cause of violence, it can be the same cause of peace, conflict. So by changing our perception of, of conflict, we can also change our behavior. Because if we think that conflict is something negative by nature, we will try to avoid it. And when we avoid conflicts, they escalate. And when they escalate, they 
sometimes turn into violence. And that, that is what we should try to avoid, violence. Um, so that's my, my starting point uh, on, on my reflection. Second, this is actually um, a reflection that is a consequence of, of my experience, how we address uh, peace building and conflict mediation. I did my master's in conflict mediation 10 years ago. And after doing my master's, I was sure that I knew how to do conflict mediation because I learned a lot of techniques. I participate in all the play roles and I was sure that I really knew how to do conflict mediation. Later on in my life, I had the opportunity to join the UN mission that was implementing the peace agreement in Colombia. And I live in a campment and I work in a campment with the ex-combatants with the FARCs in Colombia and with the Colombian army. And then I learned that I have no idea on how conflict mediation and peace building should work. And why is that? Because most of, of the things that I learned have this, this structure. You have a problem, you apply a set of techniques, and then you get a solution. And that's peace building. And actually, it doesn't work like that. This very logical approach doesn't help too much because conflicts are not logical. Conflicts are emotional, are structural, are, are cultural. So the approach should be different. And, and the scary part of it is that we cannot have a magical recipe. And it is very hard in academia to admit that we don't have a lot of control in certain scenarios. So um, it was a very humbling experience to work on the field of conflict mediation and peace building, especially in Colombia. I, I, I reflect a lot on that because at the end of the day, I was just trained to build agreements. And as I can think in the macro level of my country that the peace agreement didn't bring it immediately peace, also at the, at the local level, it happened to me the same, that the peace agreement or, or, a, or an agreement between two parties will not change the reality if the nature of the reality of the, of the relationship between the parties doesn't change. So my focus now is mainly on the patterns of the relationship of the parties, on creating spaces basically on creating give, giving a space uh, to the parties for them to try to build trust and to try to change the way that they perceive each other because if we trust the other party if we have healthy patterns of on our relationship an agreement is not even necessary it will be a consequence of a healthy relationship and this is a different approach because it cannot be five steps it cannot be one hour process. It cannot be a 13 day session. It has to be a permanent space of communication. And, and that takes way more patience, way more time. Um, so that is something that I, that, that I try to approach in my way of, of, of analyzing um, conflict prevention too, because then it means that we should create in this space permanently. And that will be a great way to to prevent violence. Uh, a second element that was actually also um, addressed by, by, by my colleague, by Roberta in her presentation, it's one element on how we can uh, we need to approach um, mediation, that there is kind, kind of a paradox. Um, if you have read the, the, um, the declaration of, of UNESCO, the, 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 the constitution of UNESCO, it states that uh, war starts in the heart and mind of men and, I, and of human beings, actually. And, and I completely agree with, with that statement. It says that also peace should be built in the hearts and mind of, of human beings. It's true. And, and there are a lot of uh, um, uh, um, literature on that area on how we basically are being affected for our fears of not being able to satisfy our basic needs and that can lead to action that sometimes it can be violent but as much as it is true it is kind of an incomplete approach because our hearts and minds are also being affected by the structural elements the context and our culture so uh, the, the the complex part and the interesting part of, of peace building is that we need to address hearts and mind as much as systems and mechanisms both at the same time. So um, when we think about this, this kind of uh, violence that can start in the heart of mind of men, it's mainly what we call direct violence. It's the, the violence that is more visible, the one that we see in the news. But there is a lot of violence that is invisible, that it takes a lot of analysis to be able to identify. 
like institutional and, and uh, violence that is caused by public policies that obstructs the, the development of, of groups of human beings or, or even the structural one like, like uh, racism, sexism, that are patterns of behaviors of a society that they might not even be aware that they have. And even if we go deeper, we have as a, as a root uh, source of violence or culture where it's found the justification of dehumanizing any group of people. So the complex element and, and, the, and the, the challenge and the interesting part, it's both going to the, the psychology of the conflict and the structural elements. If we try to create just systems without understand, without changing the mindset of, of the parties, nothing will change. If we focus on changing the mindset of the parties, but there is still poverty, lack of opportunity, gender inequality, and so on, nothing will change either. So we need to do both at the same time. And in the, in the holistic approach of, of conflict prevention that, that Roberta mentioned, it was stated like that. They have a whole structure. And one of the elements that I, I, I read in, in her presentation, it was that it says that changing the mindset of, of, of the party. So, so it's also something that, that we need to, to implement and, and it's already there. And the last point that I would like to address, it's timing. I don't know how many of you have already experience on, on conflict mediation, but a lot of us, we, we said that conflict mediation, it's a preventive tool uh, for, for violence, but it's not always the case because most of the time, especially when there is no awareness of conflict mediation, the parties go with you when the conflict has already escalated. And it's very hard to tackle these, these kind of scenarios. And why is that so complicated? Because fear has already taken control of their decision. They, they are not acting that rational because fear is already in the room and, and it's, and it's uh, an issue that we need to, to consider. Um, so if you can see this, this, this graphic, it's, it's also a graphic that, that Roberta already used, the curve of conflict, that it helps a lot to illustrate um, where we address a uh, conflict. And most of the time we use conflict mediation in this point that we call crisis where violence is about to start or when the conflict has already de-escalated and there is an opportunity of cease of fire or negotiation and mediation and so on. And maybe that's not the best approach that we should think for peace building. Peace should be, peace, should be built in peaceful times. Peace creates peace. And, and, and that is something that we need to internalize this idea that we don't have to wait until we have a war next door to start talking about peace. We need to do it even before. And, and especially in the traditional approach that they were using the term of peace building, mostly when, when the conflict is escalating in the seas of fire. So we could have avoided all this unnecessary pain if we start preventing conflicts in, in this very base of, of, the, of the curve where, is, where peace is still there, where dialogue is easy to, to start. So um, that basically will be my, my, my last refer reflection, but I would like to address something that I like a lot about the, this space that was created by the agency for peace building. And it was the name of, of, this, of this event. It's reimagining um, conflict prevention. It's not reforming mechanisms for conflict prevention. It, it, it really states the importance of the word imagination. And for me, in my experience, it is one of the key elements that we need to consider. And I would like to share with you a concept that, that is one of the main inspirations that I use in my, in my exercise. And, and it's the moral imagination. Uh, for the, those of you who, who have already studied a uh, piece. Uh, this is a beautiful book by John Paul Lederach. It's my favorite one, and it's a state. And it states that moral imagination is the capacity to imagine ourselves in a web of relationships that includes our enemies. The ability to sustain a paradoxical curiosity that embraces complexity without reliance on dualistic polarity. The fundamental belief in the pursuit of a creative act and the acceptance of the inherent risk of stepping into the mystery of the unknown. 
that lies beyond the too familiar landscape of violence. So I love this concept because it's both pragmatic and idealistic. We need to address the reality as it is, but we need to imagine how it can be better at the same time. And we like it or not, we are interconnect interconnected within, within each other with our friends and our enemies. And, and what we need to address is the interaction that we have with other, with other people. Um, also, especially nowadays in the context of, of Ukraine, we need to go beyond these discussions uh, that are everything black and white, where there is one uh, crazy evil man. And that, because even if there are a lot of uh, facts that can show that um, some acts are terrible of what is happening there, this simplistic approach obstructs any possibility of dialogue and of peace. So we need to, to start uh, rethinking how we understand what is going on around us and to, to, to believe in imagination and creativity as a, an option to build peace. And at the same time, we need to empathize with what is going on in the minds and heart of the people who are embraced, uh, that are being affected by, by a conflict. Because especially, for example, I come from a country that have uh, a long war, uh, more than 25 years, and I work in Colombia where the war lasted 50 years. Um, the possibility to imagine peace, it's scary because it's something that you have never experienced before. And it requires a lot of courage to move beyond what is familiar to you. Uh, so even if peace can be something better, there is still a lot of risk of, of giving that step. And also all of us, um, we have that, that, that uh, challenge right now in, in the context of what we are living in trying to um, put ourselves there and, and, and put the agenda of peace because it can sound naive for a lot of people, but in my opinion, there is nothing more naive than thinking that violence will bring peace in, in any part of the world. So thank you very much. <laughs>